that is the nature of politics. You can't get everybody to agree with you all the time. But you should have the right to, to say so. that I don't agree with this. I think that it would be better if we did it this way. Now, if people in power are wise, they will listen to you. If they are not wise, they will do what they like. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, some of them come a cropper. Talking with um, Mr. Cameron Dodo, and he's been sharing with us very interesting um, story about Ghana, many of which I'm sure you've not uh, heard before. Um, this is a part two of the conversation we are having with Mr. Cameron Dodo. So, yeah. welcome once again. Thank you. Yes. Um, before we, in the last episode, we were talking about the subsequent coups we had after Nkrumah, then there was. Um, all the other coups we have in the country. A champion Shuin brought the operation Feed Yourself and then Self Reliance, but at the same time, he brought um, Fauto Bejibov. <laughs> uh, they were all forms of uh, the Fauto Bejibov concept, was a form of corruption. Yes, and it was actually something that was by the nature. Mm -hmm. of the system okay. because few people with too much power it's not a good thing for any country mm -hmm. the resources belong to all of us okay. and all of us should have an equal share of it for a few people to corner them and then use them for, and themselves. for themselves and their friends it arouses envy you know, so you hear that this group of officers have made a coup and another group of officers will try to overthrow them. Sometimes they are caught, sometimes they are not caught and they get overthrown by other people from the same camp. So how do you tell one soldier from another? Mm. You don't know what is in his head. If he makes policy statements, you don't know who wrote them, whether they are meant to placate the public for propaganda purposes, or whether they really intend to follow those uh, policies. Self-reliance, oppression, feed yourself and all others were also offset by import licensing okay. and other things of that type. A country's economy should be open to the, all the inhabitants. They should all have a say. We have members of parliament. You, have, you know who your member of parliament is. If you don't like what is going on, go and tell him. If he doesn't listen, write to him. Mm -hmm. Go, make the effort. And then maybe, maybe, even if 20 people go to tell him, and he takes the word of only three. Mm -hmm. It's better than him and his girlfriends and his friends deciding that this is what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So the system, it isn't a matter of anybody being good or not, but, but the system itself, itself is a does not lend itself to proper implementation of policies, proper promulgation policy. The current president's father, Edward Kufu Adu, was also part somehow in the in the history of Ghana. Yes. How was his um, presidency like? He was a ceremonial president. Okay. He wasn't an executive president like Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. And also he was not too well at the time he became president. So his uh, period was monopolized basically by the prime minister who was the person with the executive power oh. and that was 
Dr. K. Ebusi. Mm. So, I, Edward Akufuado, former Chief Justice, and very well respected, but he didn't have too much of a role after he became president in 1970. Okay. Now, let's look at the coup that brought um, Flight Lieutenant J.J. Rollins into uh, the limelight. Um, where were you when he came? I mean, how was the scene like? I was actually in Copenhagen when I heard of his first attempt on the 15th of May, mm -hmm. 1979. And um, I came back on the 3rd of June, 1979. And on the 4th of June, 1979, they did a coup and released him from prison. Mm. Yes. What happened was that the junior officers and the other ranks were not very happy with the rule of General Kufu, who had overthrown General Echampo. Okay. As I said, once you set the yep. train in motion, mm -hmm. you too you become a target, and that is what was happening. So Rollins was released from jail by the other ranks and the junior officers, mm -hmm. and they set up the AFRC. Now, some people tried to help them, including myself, because I wanted, I had been a member of the Constituent Assembly, and I wanted them to hand over power as early as possible, and they came and they said they would hand over in three months and I wanted them to, to do so. To do so. So I helped them to try and at least stabilize their situation until the three months came and they handed over. And they did. And I respected Rollins a lot mm -hmm. for handing over in three months as he had promised because he showed a, a, a following of principle. But then, when he had handed over the PNP that uh, was elected to power, began to suspect that he wanted to come back. Mm -hmm. And they had a very silly setup called the military intelligence, whose people were not extremely bright. <laughs> and they followed Rollins all over the place. They followed his uh, friends. Uh, you know, they harassed him okay. and he felt that his life was in danger until he looked for help and came back again and this time he wanted to stay he so, to yes, yes yes and a lot of us those of us who always wanted to speak our minds and if we saw something going wrong in our country we would say so I had to leave the country. I was away for 30 years. You were away from this country for 30 years. Okay. Because I, I left in 1983. Yes. And was was it because of the threats at the time? Well, my situation was a bit peculiar. Okay. Because by then I had become the BBC correspondent in Accra, mm. and there was a lot happening in the country that the government didn't want the public to know. Mm -hmm. And I was reporting these things, and it was being broadcast on the BBC. So people could hear, and they could hear, and they mm. did, some of them didn't like it. Especially after some of them killed some judges. You mm. probably have heard the story. Yeah. Yes. And a commission was set up to investigate who might have done it. And they were suppressing the news about the commission that they themselves had set up. Okay. But they suppressed it in the Ghana media. They would hear it on the BBC. On the BBC. Okay. Reported by yours truly. <laughs> what what are some of these um, you mentioned the, the judges. Apart from the issue the case about the judges, what are some of the things you reported on that were going wrong? Um, as far as the Rollins administration was concerned, to the BBC? Oh, it is very difficult to single out. Okay. You know, this was so dramatic. 
thing, you know, because people's lives were involved. But the setup of a military government is such that they do not ever want free reporting. Because you understand something this way. Mm -hmm. I understand that same thing that okay. way. Mm -hmm. My mind is not your mind. My training is not your training. And there is no way that we can independently arrive at the same conclusion about the same controversial issue. Mm. If he's commanding us to say, think like that, then maybe because of fear for him, we might yes. do it. Okay. But for you and me to sit down and agree mm -hmm. when the thing is controversial, it's very difficult. So there was an atmosphere of, I don't like what you're saying. I don't like how you think. In the country, which to somebody like me, who had from an early age, always expressed his own views, tried to find out the facts. If it was good, it was good. If it was bad, it was bad. I told you how I adored Nkrumah when I was in school because of my teachers. And so on. and then later on he changed and I didn't like what he was doing, putting people in jail without trial. So I always insist on saying my piece. Mm. And I continue to do so. You know that this country used to produce so much gold and it was called the gold coast. The people who dug that gold were so clever and patriotic. But they didn't do it near rivers. They dug far, far away. away. They called the thing Nkomena. Mm. And they would go down, bring the soil, and they have a special thing called Yawa. They put the water in it, and they put the soil in it, and they leave it like this, and they will get the gold. Today we have people who take excavators, Bulldozers, transformations into the river itself. And I can't believe it. It is so stupid and unnecessary. It is genocide. They are killing our children for their children's sake. If you put mercury in a river and people go to drink it, somewhere else, what do you expect? You have heard that there are children being born without certain vital organs, yeah, yeah. and so on and so forth. And it is not necessary. And the country is just asleep, as if nothing is happening. Yes, gold brings money, but not at that uh, expense. Mm. So just because you need money, you must go and attack women and take their clothing and go and sell it at Makola? You can't do that. Uh, in our villages, we have people who can come there as burglars and as highwaymen. Our people used to fight them with their Asafu groups. Mm -hmm. And if they caught you, you would suffer for it. Why is it that today we are allowing people in high places, sometimes very high places, to buy excavators for others and pretend that they are not involved in Galamse, and yet we know they are. Yeah. While you were away, um, what were some of the news you were hearing from back from home? Not very good. Mm -hmm. I heard that a lot of people were taken to prison, some of them tortured, especially journalists, you know, Kwesi Prat, Kubaku, mm -hmm. and others, they were arrested by the military because by then Rollins had become a soldier rather than a politician. And the soldiers, the come and tell him so and so wrote that. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, go and bring him. And they'll go and bring the chap or put him in jail. And it wasn't very good. It wasn't at all good. And I was happy when once again the 
reverted to civilian rule. Civilian rule is not something that is without pay. Okay. But at least you can tell them mm -hmm. what you are doing is not so good. We have doomed so, we have a threatened water shortage, we have this and that. And they will listen. Or some will listen, others won't. But that is the nature of politics. You can't get everybody to agree with you all the time. Okay. But you should have the right to, do to so. say that I don't agree with this. I think that it would be better if we did it this way. Now, if people in power are wise, they will listen to you. If they are not wise, they will do what they like. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, some of them come a cropper. You are still watching People in Places here on Ghana Web TV. My guest is Mr. Cameron Dodo. The conversation continues right after this break. Sweetheart, be mindful of your health. Edge products, not your makeup. I welcome you to Sigma Health and Beauty. You can call us the beauty embassy. Who pursue beauty are more revealed with quality makeup products. There is only one place. The Sigma Health and Beauty 2022 Ghana Makeup Awards. Beauty Retail Business of the Year. Of course, we are the defending champions. <laughs> World class makeup brands and quiet on. You name it. Maybelline, Dark and Lovely. House of Tara. Any, many more. Your yeah, professionalism in the beauty industry is unmatchable. About what we for. the proper way of applying our products. Sigma Health and Beauty, Yewa Accra, Makwala, Georgina Stores, and Rollins Park, Gate 4. Fry in 0248-138-596 and 0201-408-186 or visit our online shop at www.beautyavenuegh.com. Sigma, your beauty, our joy. Welcome back from the break. Um, we Ghana recorded the last school over 30 years ago. Do you think we've learned from it? I don't know because you see, it is in human nature mm. for people to become arrogant when they get power. There is a whole book called The Arrogance of Power. And some people are so arrogant that when they get power, they don't think about tomorrow or what they can do for the country instead of for themselves. Mm. And eventually, a lot of them are, you know, disgraced because they have stolen money without thinking about what the money could do for the people. Bad roads, health facilities, schools, and, and, and things of that sort. If you go into politics and you don't have an aim mm. to make things better for your people, it's better not to go. But people can't learn from that. Now, right now, a lot of us are writing a lot about Galamsey. Mm. If you see the water, the surface color of the water, it makes you want to I don't know how you would put it, but I, I want to not become a Ghanaian and be told by somebody, you come from a country, look at the water which they drink. Mm. But Ghanaians like myself, raised in the same circumstances, do this without blinking an eyelid. How is that possible? You know? how, how do you think we can stop that, specifically Galamse? I think we should go back to our traditions. Mm. Uh, you know something called Asafuache? Yeah. yeah. The Asafu, whose check the master is mm -hmm. the Asafuache. They used to patrol the country. They would go into the bush, hide, take a look at who is coming and going, what they are doing, and anything that is against the interest of the people, they will come back report it and they will beat gong gong. 
And as soon as you heard it, you went to the chief's palace mm. because he knew there was trouble. Drums and so on. And they could have driven these Galamse people off long ago. But the government wants you to use only soldiers and policemen. Mm. But they are mercenaries. They are employees. Of the government. Whereas the as a people come from the place, it is they who drink the water. Mm -hmm. It's their children who drink the water and are affected by mercury in the water. And so it is they who should be doing the patrolling with the assistance of the military and the police. Okay. If in a village you see that the river is being polluted by excavators brought by people from Accra or Kumasi or wherever, and they hear the drums early in the morning, because these people work at night. Mm. If a group of Asaf people drumming and making noise invade the uh, river banks, they will run away and they will never come back. And it is not as if the Asaf spirit is dead, because if you go to Winneba, you will see the deer catching festival. People from the whole town, Densefu and Tuafu, it doesn't matter whether they are NPP and this, no. They all get together and they cross rivers and streams and go into the bush and they catch deer with their bare hands to show how brilliant they are. The spirit is still there. It's still there. Mm -hmm. Just Encourage it. But some of the chiefs are afraid mm. that they are safu, or uh, in my area they are called chirim. These people can overthrow them. They can distill them. Okay. So they don't want to give them the power. But without them, we can never solve. But some Galapse. people are also accusing the chiefs as being part of the people who push for Galamse. It is very difficult to get the evidence. Mm -hmm. But definitely, yes. Uh, a very big chief recently said publicly that when they come to you with a little snap, a bottle of this and so on, then you allow them. And he said, I give you the land. I said, look after it. And you are telling me that you can't look after it. Mm -hmm. If so, they come, come, to, come and tell me and then you can leave and somebody else can take your place. So we have the means. Mm. But because it's political, people say, oh, the young people have the vote and they don't have work. And so let them do the galamsi and they will get money to look after themselves. That is not necessary. It isn't everything you do to get money that you do. Mm. Otherwise, there would be no loss. You see a woman going, and you follow her at the dark corner. You do what you like there, and take her clothing, and you go and sell it. Is that how to make a living? No, that is barbarity. And Ghanaians are not barbaric. Mm. They have laws everywhere. All right, sir. Um, we are in an election year, 2024, and the country marked her 67th birthday. Um, what can you say about that? And then you add the fact that elections, what are some of your opinions or what, what should we expect in this election? Elections are formal undertakings that are supposed to bring in good government. The objective is to have good government. Mm. If they elect MPs and they go and sit there and shut their mouths, the CA is not good, right, but they say it's B. Then they, what's the point of the election? And also, if they only go there to make life better for themselves and their family, what is the use of the election? And if you are put in that position where you go to the public and say, vote for me, vote for me, I'll do this, I'll do that, and you disappoint them, they mm. will forget. One day they will come for you. Mm. So I say all those who want to be elected should 
think twice. They should look into themselves. You are an MP. You have been made a minister. You drive on a road and you see that there are potholes in that road and you don't care. Mm. I wrote an article some time ago because I could see that the road leading to uh, the National Assembly area was not the type of road that should be at a place like that. Mm. Uh, and so on and so forth. And I am not an elected member of parliament. So, yes, elections are important, but they should produce an end result mm. that the people will say, yes, we elected these people to go and look after our money to make sure that we earn a good living by getting employment, that food prices are low, that we have health facilities, that our children can go to school without are paying too much mm -hmm. and they are doing that. When the people say and they are doing that, mm -hmm. then you know that elections have meaning. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's just propaganda, propaganda. We shall do this, we shall do that, we shall do this, we shall do that. So they get it, they, they forgot what they said before they were elected. Mm -hmm. That is not good. It's not good for the country. Alright, wisdom is always got in when you sit at the feet of the older generation and that is what uh, I have gotten I'm sure you have also this is people and places on Ghana web TV I want you to like this video share and also subscribe to our YouTube channel on Ghana web TV I am Patena and this is people and places bye bye for now